Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land, Place of Binding Wise Gatherers Plus. It's a momentous, there we go, it's a momentous occasion. Potentially 50 wins and I don't lose on quarantine. I'm gonna tell you, KS47, CGZC. I don't dislike this start as much as you might think that I do. First off, I'm realizing this might be the only synergy for butter I've ever seen in my entire life. When we place my best friend down, or whatever this is called, I don't remember, I never used this item. Um, it actually puts up like an extra blocker with the item pedestal so enemies are less likely to be able to run away. Now, on a scale of synergies from useless to uh, brimstone homing shot, this is probably a little bit closer to the useless side. But on the other hand, it's a nice gesture. It's the thought that counts. We should be fine here. Just, just take it slow. See, even these rooms, you can panic a little. You know, when you're low on HP, you look at those rooms and you go, Oh, this is impossible. When you're good on HP, you just walk through and do it in like two seconds. And you're, you're like bantering the whole time. You can get inside your own head pretty easily in this game. I do want the bombs, by the way, but I just... I'm, I'm, I mean, I guess we should just drop it, at the, drop the my best friend to get the bombs. But I'm kind of saving my best friend for like if the boss ends up being rough enough to warrant the use of some bombs. Anyway, what I was going to say is our, our run so far is actually pretty good. Like, believe it or not. I think that even though we have 20 rate of fire, that's actually pretty good for triple shot. I don't think we're in a bad spot there. We're also fighting a much, much easier boss <laughs> than we did on the first run of the last one. That was rough, dude. Like, ah, our last run, that really, it got the blood pumping early on a Sunday morning here. Um... Anyway, everything's good. It's still Sunday, as mentioned. Excited to play a little bit more Control today. I know people are 50-50 on Control. Not everybody thinks that that game is uh, as amazing as I do, but I like it a lot. I'm having a good time playing it. Um, I'm happy I get a chance to play it. That's kind of like one of the perks of the job, I think. People talk way too much, and this is way better than Butter, for sure. People talk way too much, in my opinion, about like the negatives of streaming and YouTubing. Way too few about the positives. One of the things that's amazing that I hear nobody talk about ever, and this includes me, I think this might be the first time I've ever said this. However, um, it is super nice as, to be a streamer, because if there's a game you're interested in, but otherwise would maybe not be able to find the time to fit it into your schedule, for work, personal responsibilities, hobbies, you know, etc., etc. Just the the vagaries of adult life. You can do it on your stream, and even if it doesn't crush it from a numbers standpoint, you know, you, at least you can knock it out. Now, I don't think you want to. I, I mean, Dan and I have talked about this on Check the Wire a lot, and I've talked about this, you know, in Isaac episodes a lot because that's my own solo podcast. Um, but I do think like it's a. Uh, one of my least favorite pieces of advice that people give to streamers all the time is just play whatever you want as long as you're having fun, we'll have fun. I think that that's a, a nice thought that for the most part is not true. So I don't think you... Like, I wouldn't want to be like, I want to make my whole channel about NHL 20 because I think I would have a great time playing that game. But you can mix it in now and then and people will understand. <laughs> that's, that's my thoughts on that subject. Just wanna. I mean, we don't need a ton of money here, but the more the merrier, right? Okay, never mind. The less the merrier, apparently. Now let's not get twisted up here. We are still low on HP. This would be a great floor for us to uh, buy some spirit hearts. You know how I feel about buying spirit hearts. So I've really come around to it. Um, I think it's a. I think you don't do that. I think you definitely take that as a learning lesson to not use your orbital. Yet. On the last floor, we were not using our orbital, and we were in love. We were doing incredible stuff. So forget that shop for now. Let's just get closer to the item room. Not shop, arcade. Um, hold on, hold on. Okay, we gotta check. I know. I know what you're thinking. 
you're thinking pop down that my best friend. But I'm like, these guys are mobile enough that I think they might dodge it. Maybe not guaranteed, but... And then you... There we go. That's That worked out better. We also got a half spear at heart. Dude, to get... Okay, don't open the chest yet, because it might teleport us. We'll lose all our progress. Am I comfortable taking a pill here? I think the answer is honestly no. Why, why, why risk a bad trip? We could get health up. We could get, you know, balls of steel. I'm not willing to take that chance yet, though. Okay, spiders. Now you could teleport me, by the way, if you're interested. Okay, just just a waste of everybody's time. Um, so yeah, we're just we're holding steady, like Craig Finn, on the uh, on that threshold we're at right now. Halfway between um, a run that's banterable because it's strong, and a run that we want to focus at least ever so slightly. Because of the potential difficulties. Now, can I level with you? Do you think this is a secret room? Might as well try. <sighs> that hurt. Because I, I really wanted the curse room access for potential spirit heart plays. Zodiac. Hey, you should never mess with the uh, Zodiac. Uh, 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 you ought to know by now. Look, I don't have a good Billy Joel <laughs> impression, okay? Mostly because he can sing and I can't. Um... Can't sing well, at least. Actually, in the Gregorian days, you would have been admired as a great singer, and Billy Joel would seem far too melodic. We can open it, you genius! You mad genius, it completely worked. Dude, we gotta get tarot cloth. I, I really wanted to go hard on the spirit hearts, but we'll go tarot cloth, and we can still buy one, which is just merciful. Two of spades is actually, it's pretty nice for our current setup as well. Zodiac's a little bit of a weird one, right? Like, do we like it? Do we hate it? Most of the time, we don't even notice it. Sometimes it could have a huge effect, positive or negative, because of something like, you know, us not realizing. Why would you stand there? Why would you stand there? What, what are you doing? Okay, this is another case. Hold on, I shouldn't have bantered. <laughs> it's another call for caution. That's very nice. Do we want it immediately? You are gonna you are gonna think that this is a funky one. I think I think we take nothing. Now, old NL would be off to the races right now. He would take Dark Prince's crown. From Dark Prince's crown, he would then walk back, pick up uh, Liberty, not Liberty Cap, uh, Blue Cap. All of a sudden, we would have, I don't know, probably like a 9 rate of fire with triple shot, which is really good. We would also be pretty close to death. So what I'm going to try to do is just split the difference. <laughs> I'm going to try to play a little bit of a more casual run. Um, you know what? I, I Okay, that's, that's fine. That's also fine. Um, I, I think we definitely... I mean, you've been seeing it. I've been seeing it. We're going to try to pay close attention to, to the intricacies of what we got going on on this run. And we're going to absolutely do our darndest to to make this work i would rather invest a couple of minutes on floor two to try to get some disproportionate advantages like that for example um then uh, just rush through and end up at a loss in a couple of floors because we were a little bit impatient so i think that this is very sensible and that's not that bad it's not good to be clear but it's not that bad so we're gonna take wheel of fortune as well and now we've got kind of a loop set up here so prepare yourself look what's my favorite kind of isaac run is an isaac run that's about 30 to 35 minutes long and it stays just slightly above average the whole time this run is already looking like it has a good chance to be a good deal longer than that this is two runs in a row where it's taken us basically 10 minutes to get out of the first two floors but it could also be two runs in a row with uh with a sweet victory you know so Okay, um, 
So we do not like IV bag. But we can... You know what? I think we do like IV bag more than we like my best friend. And and it's it's touchy. Admittedly, it's a little touchy. But just work with me on this one because we're, we're getting somewhere. Money is going to be a big part of our potential success here. So to get restock would be amazing. Did I see restock last run? Is that where that showed up? Uh, I, I don't think we want to open that, honestly. I, I hate to leave five cents behind, but it's it's well worth it in this case. Um, see what we've got in our shop. Because re restock, IV bag, lots of hearts, you know, it, it leaves us in an amazing spot. But I do think we're going to be in a slightly perilous position for maybe like a one more floor. You know what? I actually think we buy the bomb here. You're not going to see me do that too much. <laughs> but right there, I was like, that's the ticket. That's what we like to see. Okay. I, like, I'll take what I can get right now, I guess is what I'm trying to say. All right. And we have good uh, deals with the angel potential now. It's a bit funky. But that's okay. An IV bag. Honestly, I'm so happy I thought about this item for more than like a couple of seconds. Because... It is it has allowed us to go to two curse rooms basically for free so far. It's a big one. So we have Gemini this floor. Sorry, I wasn't even like I was like, where did Gemini come from? And then I said, ah, I don't know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I didn't even I didn't think twice about it. Okay. Uh, we don't have to use two of spades right away. We we could stall on that one. I think we've opened this right away just in case it does teleport us. Then we don't have to do the whole room over again. Drop a bomb. Oh, that's so that's why you don't use two of spades right off the bat. Look at that. Anyway, everything's going pretty well. We're playing a little control later today. Playing a little Grifflands later today. I should mention before I talk about Grifflands. Um, that is a sponsored deal. I mean, by the time this video goes up, the Griffland series will be over. But I did want to talk about it. It was sponsored by Clay. Thank you to the sponsorship. Clay is, of course, the developer of Grifflands. Also developed Shank, Shank 2, Invisible Ink. Uh, don't Starve and Don't Starve Together. Uh, oxygen not included. Like, everything they have touched has essentially turned to gold. Let me use my noggin on this one, okay? So we want this. Th this floor could set us up for life. I think you use money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, oh, I didn't even want to buy it, but I think it's completely fine, actually. You do two of those. You'd like to buy another spirit heart. Then get me out. You know what? Take the pill. Well worth it. I think we're going to get a lot of money on this floor. I'm not sweating this at all. I'm going to blow this guy up. We're not getting anything out of him, and all likely he'll be rather use our money on the shop, I think. Um... But yeah, it, it's the first time, well, I shouldn't say that, it's the first time in a long time that I have uh, done a sponsored deal for, like, something that's not just one video, one stream, um, and instead is something a little bit more long-term, and it, it's, like, opened my mind a little bit. I'm like, dude, I should be doing this way more often. Not necessarily, like, just for sponsored stuff, but sometimes, you know, there's these games I play on Northern Lion Tries, where I play for, like, 45 minutes, and I'm like, uh, it's good. I don't know if I've done anything but, like, scratch the surface so far. And Grifflands was one of those. So when the, the opportunity to do this uh, collaboration with Clay came out, I was like, absolutely, I'm in. Um, and it's been, that's been a lot of fun so far to have a little bit... I mean, I'm just going to say it, to have a little bit more of an impetus to play more of the game. I forgot we had Tarot Claw. That's insanely good, dude. So I hope people have been enjoying the Clay series. It's really like the perfect match, you know? Like Dan and I have talked about it on Check the Wire. The dream sponsored uh, deal. I, I'm not saying like it, the, the deal should provide value to both parties, you know? Um, but the dream deal is like one of those Twitch bounty style uh, sponsorships where it's really just like, hey, you were already going to play Sekiro. But if you want to play a little more Sekiro, here you go. Those are the dreams. So I've been, I've been having a great time with Grifflands, and honestly, that may become something that, uh... Like, Grifflands itself may show up more often, and then on the other hand, 
more little miniature series of stuff might show up more often. Right now, it's just percolating, but in 2020, you know, we're, we're taking, uh, we're taking, not risks, I would say, but we're, we're getting out of the habit of, of just doing the same old, same old as far as content goes, except for Isaac, but, you know, ain't nothing same old, same old about never losing on quarantine. How do you feel about that? So I really think IV Bag has, has transformed my life on this one. Um, I would love to see Deal with the Angel or Devil. I, I could do either, and we've got a 50-50 chance of getting a deal at all. And then it's like, I mean, what's a 45% chance of 50? <laughs> it's like a 23% chance of getting a deal with the Devil specifically, and we got it. We'll take both. This is A-OK. -okay. And we've still got IV bag burning a hole in our pocket here. Let's go. 15 cents, 16 cents. All right. So we're pretty much, I don't want to say we're completely in the clear, but we're very, very much more in the clear than we were, uh, you know, on floor one and two. So it's very exciting for me that the possibility that we might be ab about to hit 50 runs in a row. Mentally, I've got to admit there's differences in, in how you feel about a streak. A streak that gets to five does not feel as meaningful as a streak that gets from 45 to 50. So I, we're in we're in very rare air. I've only been here maybe three times, you know? It's, it's quite exciting. They've never seen so many wins as this. Usually there's half as many wins as this. The wins are their money. The streak is their dollars. You know, you get the idea. It's, yes, it's, an, yeah, it's, I think you should, yes, I know. I know. Still waiting on season two, waiting very, very patiently. I'm content to treat, I think you should leave in the same way that I treat Curb Your Enthusiasm. Whenever Larry David gets 10 decent ideas, he comes out with the season. If it takes a year, great. If it takes four years, great. You know, I'm just happy to have more of it, honestly. I know that, uh, I mean, Curb, here's the thing. Has it gotten worse over the years? I would say yes. But Curb Your Enthusiasm being worse still puts it heads and tails above, like, almost any comedy I've ever seen. I'm trying to think of, like, what I would even put close. Like, what's my favorite comedy series of all time? It honestly might be Curb Your Enthusiasm. I would have to think. Like like some other ones that are close. Seinfeld for sure. Seinfeld I think is is extremely great. I think it's very well written, well acted. The one thing that works against it in 2020 is the fact that a show that good having the traditional th three camera setup from like the 1970s style sitcoms and a laugh track feels very dated. It's like you didn't need the laugh track. You got it under control. You know, it's a sign of the times. Every show was shot like that in the 90s until The Office uh, US came out. And then every American comedy started to be shot like The Office and is even still like that to this day. Um, I like Seinfeld, but I think I prefer Curb Your Enthusiasm. And then in terms of, like, the best comedy run, I mean, I don't know. You gotta look at, like, Arrested Development Seasons 1 to 3 extremely good but the fact that the like reanimated okay that's the, i was gonna call it the reanimated corpse of that series is still going <laughs> that's a little bit of a rude thing to say i'll admit but like i w i loved seasons one to three of arrested development well goodbye um i watched this i guess this was probably like seven years ago when it came out i watched season four i watched like two episodes and i was like this is just it's just not the same May I heard it got better as the newer seasons went on, but you know, you kind of only get one chance to, to lose me, I guess. As you can tell, I have high standards based on the fact that I've watched 90 Day Fiance for a couple months. Um, now apart from that, I don't know. I still, you know, I got to see Barry. I think Barry's going to be up my alley. You know what I think is also way up there? And I, I'm, I'm surprised, well, I guess I'm not surprised, because I understand the, the contextual circumstances surrounding it. Um, I'm surprised that I don't hear more talking about Master of None. Because, like, season one of Master of None, 
I thought was very good. And then season two, I was like, this is exceptional. I don't know if it's ever coming back, but... Uh, I think that show is a little... Maybe it's a... And uh, this sounds like, oh, maybe I, people just don't get it. That's not really how I mean it, but I, I think for like a mass market uh, comedy, it's like a little bit too artsy-fartsy. You know, it's a little too kind of Wes Anderson for... for Not for everybody, but for general audiences, I suppose. But I thought Master of None Season 2 was amazing. You know what? I'll take BFF again. <laughs> I'm not uh, I'm not above taking BFF on every single run. And you know what? I'm not I'm not above taking 10 free bombs either. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Buy it. If we could get a good card to go with the devil, I don't think that's good enough. Ah, uh, it might be good enough, but I think we're just out. I think we're out. I was tempted. I was very tempted to take a uh, blank card. We have enough HP, but it's really just a question of like... Like right now, if I'm being 100% honest, we are going to win. It might take a bit. So do we really want to sacrifice the lock of this win just to make the run a little bit quicker? If it carries the risk of a possible loss alongside it as well. My personal answer would be no. I would say no, we don't really want to do that. Old me would say yes. I know there's some irony in the sense that old me is the younger version of myself. Let's just ignore that part. The only other thing I would say right here is that I do think um, this run... I don't say this lightly because it's a good run. But I think this run is a little more dangerous than it looks like it is. Exclusively because of our HP. That's it. If we got, if we were able to replace IV Bag with Book of Revelations, it's a lock. If we were able to replace it with Satanic Bible, it's a lock. As of right now, with no renewable energy source, it's not a lock. It's, it's really, really good. And I know you're like, he's ignoring Ma of the Void. I'm really not. It's just like, Ma of the Void is like... It's like being a millionaire. And getting gift bags for going to the Oscars. You're gonna have to work with me on this metaphor. You know, you ever see that, like, the guests at the Oscars, the, the gift bags that they get, it has like $10,000 worth of merchandise in it? Why does Brad Pitt need $10,000 worth of merchandise? You know, he gets paid 5 to $25 million per movie. Now, I, I understand that it's kind of like, you know, the celebrity showing up to the Oscars as part of the promo to begin with, so there's some business stuff. You can't just be like, why give them the money? There's people starving. But, you know, it is one of those things where you're like, like when an NHL player wins MVP in the All-Star game, and they're like, congratulations, Brock Besser, on your new Toyota Prius. And you're like, man. Look, I picked a bad example because until this year, Brock was still on his entry-level contract. He might have loved that Prius. He might, he might be like me as well. He might be like, you know, just because maybe I can afford a car that's a little bit more snazzy than a Prius. Kind of just like driving what I'm driving, right? Um, but on the other hand, you're also like, the man is now getting paid like six and a half million dollars a year. You're going to give him a Toyota Prius? That's what Ma of the Void is like. And it's already proving me wrong. Ma of the Void only seems to give you what you need when you don't really need it. That's just, and I'm sure that there's a, a bias in there. Without a doubt. I know the internet likes to point out biases and uh, fallacies and so on. And sometimes you're right and sometimes you're right, but in the wrong way. This is not venting, by the way. This is just, it, it just popped into my mind. I did, so I posted a tweet that was like, these are my two favorite indie games of the year. And I, it actually should have been three because I forgot Hades. But um, it was Stone Shard and One Step from Eden. And somebody replied and said... I'm sensing a bit of a roguelite bias here. It's not a bias. It's like it's, it's 
his personal preference. Which I guess is bias, but it's like... So what? It's uh, his personal preference, you know? And I, I don't think, I think that person was just making a joke. But I just like... I did find myself to it like a 1 out of 10 extent. I was like, what do you want me to be? Objective game reviews? There is not enough pixels on the screen at this given moment. I've placed it into the algorithm and determined this game deserves a 3.71 out of 10. Everybody's got bias. I think if, if you try to live your life without bias, well, first off, I think you're very much lying to yourself. What do you want for dinner? I've got no preference. You liar! You're a liar. I know you want chicken strips. How did he know that? Because everyone wants chicken strips, dummy. It's the perfect food. You just shouldn't have them that often because they're not good for you. You might be like, I don't want chicken strips. I want pizza. Okay, well, congratulations. We got ourselves a scholar here. <laughs> I hate to say, I mean, how many times have I said it? I have a sophisticated palate to some extent. I like bitter foods. I like foods that are delicate. Um, you know, the, o the only quote-unquote, like, a food that you would associate with adulthood that I don't really like are, are mushrooms. And even then, I still eat them. But as much as I'm like, oh, man, that, you know... You know what would really hit the spot right now? A delicate plate of shirashi. My brain is like, that's good, but you know what else would taste pretty good right now? Ten chicken McNuggets. <laughs> it's, it's the truth. It's the truth. It's modestly spiced, but I think it's worth taking um, Lord of the Fall in there. Lord of the Pit. There we go. Just because... Uh, Lord of the Pit is a speed upgrade, and we, we needed speed. We actually don't anymore, which is funny, because, and I'm assuming this is like a Zodiac pickup has helped us out there. Maybe we got Ares. Um, but on top of being an ability to fly, it's going to make our dodges better. So I, I do think it was worth getting. In a way, we also are kind of insulated from danger, because we have uh, Mob the Void and a Thame. So every time we hit an enemy with Ma of the Void or get hit... Oh, we have Stompy. Be careful. We, we can make a Thame work for us. So we, we really still do not have a renewable source of HP. But on the other hand, we have two sources of, of Demon Hearts that, at least in conjunction, should be worth a little bit more. So again, watch out because you have... Stompy, you don't. I mean, you never want to step on the red poops, but it's just. It's good practice right now when you walk into a room to just be like, are there any things I should be looking out for here? Oh, we're. Dude, we're cruising. This one. I was apprehensive for a bit, but we've locked this one in. And I honestly, like, obviously we've made mistakes. I mean, I did blow myself up with a bomb, uh, a bomb very recently. However, I think we owe both this run and the last run. Thank God, that's so good. Uh, to, to very sensible play, to be honest with you. We, this run could look extremely different if we had decided to take that deal with the devil early on. Now, maybe it would look different in a good way, but I'm not going to trade what is now kind of a, a cruise to victory for, uh, sorry, I shouldn't say cruise in 2020. What is a safe social distancing vacation I wouldn't trade it for the world. So we can just kind of... Don't lose your tenacity, but we can we can enjoy our victory lap here. There's something to be said about compost here, I think. I never use compost properly, but I think we're in a position to be taking some chances. I mean, we have Mulligan and Rotten Baby, so I would think that there's a chance to make uh, to make those work. I don't know, dude. Book of the Dead is pretty good. We've already lost all our flies. <laughs> Please, I would just, I would very much like to. Why not? I would very much like to uh, 
know where I'm going and get to the boss fight. I feel like everything's everything's going pretty well, but wouldn't wouldn't hurt to have access to the freaking map, a fundamental element of the gameplay. Send them. Send them. I don't know. I guess we're I guess we're rolling compost, even though I'm not using it appropriately. It is what it is. Anyway, I've completely forgot what I was talking about earlier. Doesn't really matter. It's a good run. It's a good, we had we had good banter for time there, or for a time there, I should say. Dude, I'm loving. Is that I don't know if that's Poke Go or like Mystery Egg or whatever the heck it is. Is doing great work. Lump of coal would be pretty okay here, I think. Haha. <laughs> Honestly, I do think we want that. If there's one thing to complain about on this run, it's just that the run is a little bit... Don't shoot the messenger on this one. The damage stat is not amazing. So what, you know? Not a, not a big deal, but uh, something we would like to get sorted out if possible, or at least build our, you know... Build our uh, optional items, our electives around that weakness. Hello? Is there an enemy? I cannot shoot this enemy until the next enemy is gone. So, oh, you're you're my friend. You were my friend. I'll see you again when the Hulkster gets to heaven. You know that one? It's when you know if if you're. I mean, even I'm, like, a little bit too young to have been there when Hulk Hogan was at the peak of his fame. And by the way, I understand. <laughs> I understand the negativity surrounding Hulk Hogan. Um, and and the positivity, to some extent, because he's, like, a, a, an idol for a lot of people who, you know, grew up in the 80s, I guess, and like professional wrestling, but then, you know, kind of slipped up a couple of times in his personal life, without a doubt. Um, but I always just think about the fact that I cannot possibly comprehend Hulk Hogan's level of fame. Because he came out with an album of Hulk Hogan themed songs. Including The World Just Lost Another Hulkamaniac, which is like... It's gotta be a made up story of a Hulk Hogan fan who died and he sings a tribute song to them. I used to tear my shirt, but now you've torn my heart. I knew you were a Hulkamaniac right from the very start. Well, like, there's this chorus in the background that goes, Right from the start, you were my friend. Hulk Hogan, by the way, cannot sing. I don't mean that to be rude, because we're kindred spirits in that regard. However, it's not like, you know, you know, Scarlett Johansson came out with that album of, like, Tom Waits covers. And everybody was like, this is completely unnecessary. But she can kind of sing. You know, she's not like a bad singer. Hulk Hogan, on the other hand, bad singer. What is happening? Why am I constantly being, like, sucked backwards on this map here? Is there a tractor beam? Like, wh what's going on? Why can't I move? It, I think Gemini is moving me. I know this makes no sense. You're like, he's he's truly lost his mind. I have not lost my mind. I, I basically, despite having 1.46 speed, the only way I can describe this is that Isaac feels like... It's like driving a, a, a steamship right now. Like, he's got no agility. It's very frustrating. And I'm, I'm, I know we're going to win, but it's very frustrating. I have no idea why some combination of... Items here is, is sending me to the freaking stratosphere. Like, in terms of my rage. My rage is in the stratosphere. There's a surprising amount of wrestlers who have released uh, albums, though. And by surprising, I mean Hulk Hogan. But then also, um, Macho Man Randy Savage. Legitimately, if, you, if you're not aware, he has an album. I forget what it's called, but track one is a... Uh, diss track to Hulk Hogan called Be a Man Hogan. I never knew Hogan would go out like a punk. Be a man, Hogan! 
And if, yes, he does it all in the Macho Man voice. Because I think, I don't know, maybe that's just his voice? I've always wondered that. I know, I know, you know, rest in peace. Um, but I've always wondered that about Macho Man Randy Savage. Like, when he had somber moments, did he... I'm assuming he, he had, like, a, a show voice. But, like, was his real voice just like that, but slightly toned down? Like, when he got bad news? Like, when they, when they did renovations on his house and they found, you know, mold in the attic? So he was gonna go over budget? So you're like, oh no! The cream does always rise to the top! I can't do the voice. It, it, doing that voice, if you can't do it, is bad for you. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. This is the, <laughs> the point in an Isaac run where everything is completely sorted for us. So, literally, like, there's nothing to banter about. And also... Um... I'm, I'm kind of too close to the end to introduce a new topic. <laughs> That's where we're at at the present moment. Um... I'm still... Why am I so slow and my movement is so weird? What is this? I'm not gonna let it get me down, but... I'm just confused. It's not even Gemini this time. What's happening? You may disbelieve me, by the way, but something... Like, I'm getting sucked into enemies. You know, it, you know what it is? This freaking... Oh my god, I'm actually slightly nervous. You know what's happening? One of the enemies that we spawned... Has... Is a champion that had, like, a tractor beam associated with him. I don't know if anybody is going to be sympathetic to me on this one. But that could... I, mean, I He's gone now. That could have gotten us killed. Maybe not in all likelihood. Oh no, is it back? Either that or I'm suffering a severe cognitive episode right now. Yeah, you're talking like a weirdo about stuff that doesn't make any sense. No, that's normal. I feel like I've lost my mind a little bit. I'm not saying all this damage is due to that. Because that's just uh, ridiculous. However, I am a little bit, like, befuddled. I don't know if, if Mystery Egg has actually maybe caused us more problems here. And also, where the heck? Oh, $3 bill gave us uh, Fire Mind. Okay, so just don't do that would be step one. And then kind of hang back a little bit. I think we got to start playing this a little bit more conservatively than we ever would have thought necessary at this point. Because the the odd fire mind can really throw you for a freaking loop, dude. And then, of course, you're just trying to make... Mob the Void work whenever possible, and just... I, I think that I was in a good position, but I was starting to spiral a little bit. And just to get that one demon heart has has lifted my spirits. And brought me out of misery. Did I, okay. We, I'm maybe I am suffering a mental collapse because I'm like, didn't we go this way? I don't know. This is what happens when every second floor has a question mark on it, and I have so many familiars, I don't even know what's happening. Oh, that must be so hard for you. I have so many familiars. I have so much help on my run and so many friends. As long as we, and I, I admit I'm a little embarrassed by the fact that this run even came close potentially to being dangerous, and I guess it's still there to some extent. Um, I will admit I got a little, got a little apprehensive there at a, at a point. Happy that we started to pull ourselves out. You know what we should be doing? 
is using uh, Ma of the Void when we enter every room. Demon Baby's pretty good. We get conjoined yet? Like we have so many, <laughs> we have so many things following us. Nothing. That was good. We definitely wanted the HP last. Forgive me focusing on Isaac here on a run that looks like pretty set, but I just, I really did get rattled. I, I, if I reverse engineer this, I really do think that um, Mystery Egg, which I've probably called by nine different names so far, I really do think Mystery Egg spawned an enemy that had a tractor beam and totally screwed up my dodging for a bit. I'm not saying it's not my fault, merely I didn't anticipate such a bizarre series of unfortunate events like Lemony Snicket coming to pass. Yeah, probably don't stand still there, um, but I think we actually do have uh, whatever the item is that makes it so the second hit only hits you for half out, out of Zodiac. I should know that one. Is that the, that's Cancer, isn't it? It's tears up plus you feel protected. That sounds right. Anyway. We're free. <laughs> a little spiced, but, ladies and gentlemen, 50 wins in a row on quarantine. How about that? For now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!